Good morning, friends. It's a Sunday morning. I'm going to try to help out my Mopar brothers. I've made a lot of videos, but I'm going to try to make this one an all-encompassing. I still get questions from people. I'm not sure if they're done simple enough or if I'm leaving something out. Most of our Mopars came with manual drum brakes. Ma Mopar put all of the money into the drivetrain and they did a fantastic job doing it. Most people are looking for a disc brake upgrade. It's real easy to put disc brakes on a 62 and up uh, A body, a B body, or a 70 through 74 B or E body. All we have to do is use factory components. Old timers since the mid 70s have known this. Uh, one of the best literatures that there is is Discotech, written by none other than Richard Ehrenberg. And it lists how to do a disc brake swap on a Mopar correctly using factory components. That's essentially what we did about seven years ago. The correct way to put disc brakes on an earlier Mopar is to bolt on 1976 A-body components. The reason you choose 76 is the 3, 4, 5, and 6, that era does fit, does bolt on, and does work. But in 1976, Ma Mopar went to the full size 2.6 inch, two, sorry, 2.75 inch piston, which they had been using on all the Kelly Kelsey Hayes calipers since 1969. The C bodies, the Imperials, big pin calipers, all had a 275 inch piston. So, it gives you much better clamping force, given the option. If you're going to the wrecking yard, you don't have that option. So, basically what we did was we reproduced those components from the forged spindles out. Those 76 A-body components really is a little bit of a mix and match. These spindles are actually borrowed from 73 and 74 E-bodies. They made a different caliper bracket. And the sliding calipers were introduced in 1973. They're very effective and, and uh, uh, cheaper system and they work well. All Mopar revamped all of their braking systems in 1973. Uh, just to keep up with the market. So... Basically, that's all that you have to do. Now, that system was designed to run 14-inch wheels. Those cars came off the assembly line with 14-inch wheels. So you can run 14s, you can run 15s. That's what makes it wonderful for our older A bodies and B bodies. You don't have to do a wheel swap. When you look at these other aftermarket component people, engineered components, SSBC, master power brakes, they tell you, some of them tell you, you have to run 15-inch wheels because they just hodgepodge some gear together. Some of them tell you, we don't know if your wheels will fit, period. That's up to your discretion. Leave us out of it. Uh, I can't imagine somebody spending a thousand or fourteen hundred dollars on one of their kits and the man telling them, you know, good luck on the wheels. It just seems crazy to me. Once again, these factory components were designed to run with a 14 inch wheel. Whenever you run factory components, you're never going to have any problems. They're going to look right. They're going to fit right, and they're going to work right because they worked on tens of thousands of cars, and you can get the replacement parts. You know, every magazine that's ever been printed said run out in the 80s and 90s and even 2000s. said run out to your wrecking yard and pull all of this stuff off of an A-body. Well, 
Those days are long gone. That's why we made all of these components brand new. Every single piece here fits the factory parts manual. If the bolt's there, we made it. If the seal's there, we made it. We even include new ball joints. Ask one of those other folks out there if you're getting new ball joints. Matter of fact, ask them what kind of components that they're getting. I bet you that they can't tell you that you're sh they're shipping brand new 1976 correct A-body components. Now, let's talk about a couple of other things. This was a very expensive project to get this done. We did not make the rotors initially. There's no reason to make these rotors when you can go to any auto parts store on the planet Earth and get rotors for a 1976 Dart. I don't care whether it's O'Reilly, Pep Boys, Napa, or whatever. And you're going to have the selection. You're going to get to pick what rotors you want. On the low end is some Prontos and some Citric, Centrics or some Duralast. On the high end, some people still offer Ray Bestus and Borg Warners. They're not expensive. They run between $45 and $65 a piece. You know, and those are top shelf rotors, and that, if that's what you want to run. These other big corporations, they sent this stuff over to China, and they just said, we'll duplicate all this. Well, there's no reason to. That's one of the biggest problems they have, and they tell you why your wheels won't fit, because those rotors are so far out of tolerance. They're not balanced right. The hub registers are too big. If you look at some of them, they look like they were cast in, I don't know, Ho Chi Minh's backyard. It's just really pitiful performance. If you go buy your rotors from Napa or AutoZone, you can bet your sweet ass that they're going to fit and they're going to be in tolerance and they're going to be balanced and they're not going to explode on you because if they were selling junk rotors by the tens of thousands, Napa, AutoZone, and the rest of them, they'd all be out of business by now from the dozens of lawsuits. So, you know, that's why we didn't make them. They're already there. But nobody made these Chrysler components. So, uh, we sell it. It is complete down to the very last cotter pin. It comes with very good directions comes with parts pictures from the original manual, not our pictures that we made up, from the original service manual, like coming down the assembly line. Now, let's talk about some options and some problems that the other people don't know how to deal with, but we know how to deal with. Some of the early B-body cars 1966 through 1969, they had the large sway bars in the front. That also includes some of the high-performance A-bodies. Those original cars were designed with the calipers to run in the rear. The calipers to run in the rear, behind the spindle, so you didn't have any interference. Now, the new components that you're going to be receiving in 1970, Chrysler switched over and started running their calipers in the front. It's a front mount design, and of course that's what these components are. Now, in the old days, they'd tell you these other companies just switch the spindles around, move your calipers to the back, and voila, problem solved. Well, not really. When you do that, you come up with a crazy hose corkscrew configuration all wound around. You have to zip tie it up, or here in Texas we call it uh, Southern Engineering. and uh, Or you had to make custom hoses with some round banjos on the end so you could mount them at any location. Well, it goes back to the same problem. 
Mall Chrysler re resolved that problem. Very many, very few people know it, but Chrysler did make a rear mount sliding caliper that we sub substitute in. The bleeder and the hose intake are on opposite sides, so you get to run the factory hoses. These engineers sit around and fix all these things and let a little problem like that blow them away. So, you know, there's lots of articles about this and this and how to do this and that. Well, just say, hey, Wayne, you know what? I got a big old factory sway bar up front and we need to run the rear mount calipers. It's a little bit of an upgrade charge and voila, completely fixed, factory components, done right, and no problems. Now, now we move on to uh, rotor upgrade. Uh, we did decide these basically ran basically 1095 rotors originally. We did come up with some drilled and slotted rotors which are available for people. If you do want to buy some rotors from us, this is the only ones that we sell. This upgrade, very nice. We do not sell the factory standard rotors. Once again, you can get them from any auto parts store on the planet. Nice thing about drilled and slotted rotors is the whole idea is to cool these rotors as fast as possible. That's why disc brake systems work very well and drum brake systems don't. Once that drum gets hot, it cannot dissipate that heat rapidly. And so this allows for more flow in the holes. And what happens is, most people don't understand this, but as the pad's in contact and it heats up, uh, there forms a, a small, minute layer of gas between the pads and the rotors. Like a very thin sheet of ice. Little bitty <laughs> gas pocket. The rotors and the slots phew, whisk that stuff away, ensuring a better contact. So, drilled and slotted rotors are not just for the ego guy that thinks that they look cool. There is a purpose to them. 